Okay guys, so we are on the beautiful map Mirkwoods in the free for all match in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22 and we get to play the Mordor faction. Let's build an army worthy of Mordor. Okay guys, so that is the plan. Mordor is a very solid faction in Battle for Middle Earth 1 in a free for all match because we get a lot of money collected during this match. And that is going to be good because Mordor is the one faction with plenty of different possibilities. We have the chance to recruit Nazgûl, Witch King, Troll Cage for the Trolls, for the Drummer Trolls, the Mumai Kill Pan, the Easterlings, the Haradrims. Like Mordor has limitless, limitless possibilities which are going to guarantee us the victory in this game. <coughs> Yes, 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 I'm sure about that. I'm sure about that. Okay, so at the beginning of the game, after capturing those two settlements, I will show you guys how to creep easiest way with the Mordor faction. Watch carefully, please, because you might learn a thing or two as I'm trying to make this games as educational as I potentially can. So hold on a second. Uh, let's recruit more and more workers. We can also use them later on for scouting purposes, but now I want you guys to focus on the creeping action, okay? Watch the movement with the golem. That's very important. Okay, we need to stop now. So basically, that is the maximum range of the Vargs. If we stop there, they won't go back to the lair. And this is going to give us the chance and the time to burst down the lair with the Eye of Sauron and those two orcs. And now we can also beat them into the enemy farm. Dude, that is a win-win situation, boys. That's crazy. Okay, now we can actually move on and creep the goblin layer right off the bat. And during all this time, we will keep spamming orcs all day, all night. That is the plan, ladies and gentlemen, because as we are spamming orcs, we're gonna lose them, obviously. But that's fine, because when we lose them, we also get a lot of additional power points in long terms. And that is the major reason why Mordor and Isengard need 20 power points for the Balrog summon, but Gondor and Rohan need only 10 power points for their ultimate summon, the Army of the Dead. Okay, so let's creep this, and we need to make sure to focus down the lair. We won't fight against the enemy goblins, that's not what we are looking for. We want to kill their home first, this way they are homeless, you know, and then we can kill them way, way easier. And also, let's recruit one goblin archer, or orc archer rather, and we can come... Oh, hold on a second, this works actually, <laughs> they are MVPs, dude, they killed... Uh, you know, the enemy farm, and now they are returning home and killing our settlement. Okay. <laughs> Alright, that's not how I actually, you know, thinking, I was, how I was thinking this would go, but it's fine. It's not the end of the world. Our orc archers are good enough to force the enemy soldiers to retreat, and our early game is looking phenomenal. We have a level 3 orc, and we can combine this orc now with the orc archer. This way we get an early level 3 combination of orcs and orc archer. That's pretty good. And they will be kind of tough to deal with at the beginning of the game for the opening players. But keep in mind that in free-for-all matches, you get much more and much faster resources collected. So we will eventually have to deal with a huge army very soon. So we know the bottom left side, but also the top right side are both Gondors. We know that. And that is good, because Gondor has no chance in long terms against Mordor. And in order to make this game a bit more challenging, we will not recruit any catapults all game long. We will try our best to win with Nazgûl, with Witch King, and with Trolls and Mumakil. This is going to be our primary army, and hopefully we can pull it off. Hopefully we can get the victory without recruiting any siege weapons. Okay, so we're in a phenomenal spot. So three settlements for Mordor early on. Holy guacamole, guys. I'm telling you, we will be Alan Mask of the Battle for Middle-earth universe. So level 3, we are also scouting the middle with the Lamermin workers. That's also what I would always suggest you guys to do. Keep scouting all the time. They cost only 25 resources, but the amount of information you can get from them is actually kind of insane. So we have a lot of vision control. Now we gotta wait for the mill to be finished and build the troll cage right now. And then we can start recruiting some of the mountain trolls to keep those outside settlements protected. That is the plan. You laborers, get to work! What are you waiting for? Okay, so we have a lot of information about the map. And we can even play a bit more risky by sending those units forward. But not too forward because I want to be able to disengage. So actually, let's cover this. <laughs> let's be annoying. Uh, guys, that's double Gondor against double Mordor. Not against. It's like a free-for-all. Everybody is against everybody. 
but we have two Gondors included in this free for all and two Mordors. The Mordor is actually on the opposite side of the map, so he's at the top left and I'm at the bottom right. For that reason, we're gonna focus first of all on the Gondor factions. Oh, oh, he's not paying attention, dude! <laughs> okay, can we kill him, please? Shoot! This Orc Arches, though, they are so slow. Dude, I'm used to playing with Gondor in the last days and Gondor Rangers, in compared to this <laughs> Orc Arches, they are shooting 10, 10 times faster. Build towers, you know, just better safe than sorry. And we are in a, in a very good spot, but we will eventually, you know, end up losing those settlements in long terms. And that's kind of okay, because we can reclaim them easily once our mountain trolls are up on the field. Okay, so we can keep scouting, and we are both, uh, in, you know, from both sides, they are both going for the Gunner Knights. And so with Orcs all alone, going for the map control or keeping the map control secure is going to be nearly impossible. Look at that, we will keep losing them all the time. But it's okay, you know, the second our, tro our trolls are up on the fields, it's going to be a different story. And after the trolls, boys, we will have to recruit the Witch King. Witch King is essential for the Mordor faction. Always go for the Witch King, uh, because the amount of leadership and utility Witch King offers, and also the tankiness, in compared to a normal Nazgul, is just insane. We are only one power open away from getting the industry unlocked, which is going to be a huge power spike for the Mordor faction. I mean, he's annoying us, right? He's actually killing all the settlements. Luckily, on this map, where we are at, at the bottom right side, uh, there is a settlement behind our castle, which is going to be almost impossible for the opponent to reach, because we have plenty of towers protecting us. Okay, so we are in a good spot. This Gondor has not even a full base yet. Dude, we are in a, such a good spot. I mean, I believe the Gondor at the top right side has no threat on us. He has no chance. We don't know about the Gondor at the bottom right side. So as Gondor, you have actually a couple of options when you play a free-for-all match. Against Mordor especially, you have the chance to go for upgrades, which is going to be a bit more risky because Mordor can easily get really fast counter units to your Gondor Knights. So your Gondor Knights can't really do much against the enemy trolls. And for that reason, um, sometimes I believe the most solid strategy when you play Gondor against Mordor in this map is to rush Gandalf. So use your Gondor Knights early on to get the power points collected you need to turn your Gandalf the Grey into the Gandalf the White. And the second you do that, you rush Gandalf without buying upgrades, without doing anything else. Alright, so we need in total 4 trolls before we can get the troll cage to level 2. And that is going to give us the chance to recruit the Drama Troll. For some celebration. Of the Mordor faction. Oh, nice one. He lost 200 now. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> dude, dude, this is the battle stance. You know what I'm saying? The battle stance, um, I also didn't get used to it. But trust me, guys, the second you get used to it, play around the battle stance with the aggressive and hold ground stance, it's a huge improvement to the gameplay in this game. And hopefully, I will be also able to improve myself because I just lost, because I didn't pay attention, my level 3 combo battalion. That's painful, but luckily, we got actually... Industry unlocked, we can now use it on the three slaughterhouses and get this way a bit faster money to get the Witch King up on the field. Okay, so... I mean, I'm kind of curious what they are up to, right? I don't know what the Mortal player is doing in the meantime, even though we are scouting, but they, are, they keep killing our workers all the time. So we have not enough information about the map. This Mortal is also going for the Troll Kitch. The Baradur, the Eye of Sauron, is here. He has also the same base looking like us. Um, slaughterhouses, obviously, that's your primary resource building when you play Mordor, because they give you the food bonus, which is making our, not only our trolls, drama trolls, but also the Mooma kills later on way, way cheaper. Okay, so we have 3,000 in the bank, boys. We need 5,000 more. It's actually a lot. But at this point of the game, going for a Nazgul is going to be a little bit a waste of money. Nazguls are very good early on. I mean, in a situation like this, would be even a great choice to kill the enemy Gondor Knights. But Witch King is 99.9% .9 of the times better. And because we will get much more money in a free-for-all match than we usually get in a 1v1 in a one -one situation, we should be also able to get the Witch King quite early up on the field. I'm assuming the, the Gondor player at the bottom left side is actually rushing Gandalf. Because I didn't see any upgrades yet. 
And the blue Gondor, even though he didn't have full beast yet, he has upgrades first. It wouldn't make any sense. The only reasonable explanation about that is that this Gondor at the bottom left is saving for his Gandalf, which is going to be a nightmare for us. Because as we are talking, we have zero counter to Gandalf, you know, we have zero, we have nothing to deal with that guy as we are talking. And for that reason, later on, Mumu kills are key. Mumu kills are the best counter to heroes. Because regardless how expensive your hero is, regardless how strong and tanky he is, it doesn't really matter anything for a Mumu kill. The second he steps on you, you are foot. And then he's gonna be happy and say, looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. So come, come to me. Oh. I mean, I'm actually kind of surprised and also kind of a little bit disappointed. Oh my goodness. Okay, now I'm pissed. <laughs> oh, hello, darkness, my old friend. My troll with the yellow pants or green pants actually is no more. And that's a very, very... Oh my goodness, what is my troll doing? What is happening? What is happening? They are going to war. Hey, guys, please retreat. Please retreat. Please don't make me nervous. We still need 2,000 for the Witch King. And if this Gandalf and his Gondonites decide to attack us, we will lose a lot. A lot. Because he will have upgrades soon. Also, Gandalf is providing additional armor leadership to make those Gondonites a bit tankier. And uh, we have nothing to deal with that. I mean, we have trolls, but as you can see, without leadership, Gandalf is able to one-shot them. And that is not a good situation. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Come on now, I need a little bit more than 1,000. A little bit more, a little bit more. We can do it. We can do it, we can do it. Oh my goodness, what is my troll doing? No, 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 no. Please, go back. Oh my goodness, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. We need to keep this troll to the to the mountain troll, uh, to the drummer troll. This way he will become a bit more tanky, but I guess Gandalf has Easter light back on the menu wars. Yes, sir. And yeah, there is nothing I can do for this troll. It was nice to meet you, my friend. Now we gotta try to defend. We gotta try to defend. Oh my goodness. He's playing so good with the Gandalf too. Right, I need to give credits to my opponents. He's actually putting a lot of pressure. Oh my, look, lightning sword. This Gandalf, though. Oh, even wasted Eye of Sauron. We have nothing anymore. We have nothing as we are talking. We have only the drummer troll in his belly. But we have one more troll coming out of the troll cage now. Move, move, please, 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 move. We need Witch King. Come on, I need a little bit more. A little bit more for the 8,000. He blasted our drummer troll on the ground. Let's use industry once again at the bottom side. There we go. And ladies and gentlemen, the Witch King has been chosen. 30 seconds for him to arrive. And just like in the films, it's going to be an epic situation between Witch King and Gandalf. And by the way, guys, quick question to you. How was your reaction when you first time saw this extended edition in which uh, there was like a small fight between the Witch King of Engmar and, and Gandalf? I personally, for myself, I got a little bit disappointed. I know this didn't happen in the films like that. I mean, in the film, G Witch King wasn't able to break the stuff and kind of knock down Gandalf. But what do you think? Oh my goodness, do not come between the Nazgul and the Spray. But what do you think, guys? L please let me know in the comment section down below. In a fair fight in the films, if Witch King would face against the Mifrandia, the White Rider Gandalf, who would be able to come ahead and who would be able to win? Okay, with the Witch King, and we also killed this level 9 Gondonite, by the way, with the Troll. Uh, with the Witch King, we should be able to buy ourselves enough time to reclaim the map control. And now we can, we have to keep recruiting more and more trolls. There are some small adjustments we did to the, to the Mordor faction in the patch 2.22. So basically, the second your troll cage is level 3, every troll and also drummer troll you recruit from a level 3 troll cage is going to be automatically level 2. And there is like a specific change to the Mordor faction because Mordor has no sustain, no recovery. Uh, with the monster so you gotta be level two in order to activate the auto heal over time if you are only level one your mumu kills or your drummer trolls they will remain being low hp all the time and this will kind of make it a bit more powerful for oh hold on a second they are actually fighting okay so the mordor is actually attacking the gondor at the top side i'm kind of surprised because normally <laughs> if i play free for all everybody choosing to attack me but in this situation, I'm actually fighting and facing only against the Gondor at the bottom left side. And here's ranges, but these ranges are from the summon, right? They are summoned, so they are not there for permanent uh, duration. And for that reason, guys, when you don't have to, it's not a wise choice to fight against summoned units. That's not what we are looking for, because 
they will be gone anyway. So if you can, just wait it off. Just wait until they disappear before you take... Oh, hold on a second. Let's not fight this. Gandalf is still there. And our screech is pointless when Gandalf is around because Gandalf's leadership, additionally to the 50% armor and 100% combat experience, also grants the nearby allied units fear resistant. Okay, so, you know, okay. I mean, I can't really do much about this kind of. I mean, my, I can attack him with Witch King, but it takes a long time for him to die if to my Witch King all alone. But what I'm trying to do is keep him away from my castle. That's the least thing that, that I can do. And I think we are buying our, ourselves this way also a lot of time. Oh, I can kill this Condor Knights. They have no upgrades, they will get one shot. Now, look this, look this. Look, I want to build also now the Moonway Kill Pen. Let's... Oh! Boom! Sun on your face! Yeah, there we go, my friends. There we go. That's the payback. The Moonway Kill Pen is building up now. And before we move out with one single Moonway Kill, what I want to also do... Hey, this Golem is annoying. Did you guys ever see a Golem getting killed by the Witch King? If not, that's your time to shine. Watch this. Watch this. Dude, Golem is so tanky. He doesn't even get one-shotted by the Witch King. <laughs> Okay, all right, all right, it's okay. He's gone. I mean, Gollum is a cutie, but he's not a cutie if he's taking care of my lamb removal workers. What we can also do is we can obviously put Haradrims on top of the Mumu kill, but what we will do instead is we will recruit Orc Arches, give them Fire Arrow upgrade, and then put them on top of the Mumu kill. That is the plan. They are dealing a little bit less damage to units, but they are way more effective against buildings and structures. And they're also looking cool. So we need to get Fire Arrow purchase for that reason. And we can also go for the Devastation or, or the uh, Scavenger from the Spellbook, but we won't do that. Because as Mordor, in a free-for-all match, pretty much as every faction in the free-for-all match, you want to pick the necessary power points only to get the chance to summon the Balrog as early as you can. That is your goal. Okay, so Mumai kill. I mean, we are kind of broke, though. I mean, we have not that much money. Maybe Scavenger would be useful, but let's not do that. So, I believe the first target of us should be the blue Gondor at the top right side. Because I believe he's the weaker player, and taking down the weaker player means we can just focus then on the Gondor at the bottom left side. We won't attack the Mordor until the very end, because I want across the full map to attack my opponent. I want to do it step by step, you know? Oh, Lightning Sword is gonna be missed. Nice, my Witch King is in a safe spot. And that's a huge cooldown. When you see your, uh, you know, opponent... Oh, hold on a second. Is he gonna use Easter Light? I can dance around the Rosie, but I can also attack him. Go, do not come between the Nazgul and his prey. Feast on his flesh. All right. Don't you see death when you... How was the uh, quote again from Witch King? Do you not fear death when you see it, old man? This is my hour. Right, we have the first Mumma kill. Let's give them fire arrows and put them on top of the Mumma kill. And one Mumma kill is not enough, so we will have to wait for the second one. Now, it's a very tricky situation, but I want you to listen carefully. The Drummer Trolls in Battle for Middle Earth 1 are not able to provide leadership to Mumma kills. But what they can do is they can make those archers on top of the Mumma kills much, much stronger. And for that reason, we will always keep one or two Drummer Trolls with the Mumma kills and... Our Mumma kills can become like an archer unit from a long distance. They can keep shooting with Witch King, Drummer Troll, and also the Eye of Sauron. And eventually, even Darkness, which we can unlock later on, D will hit like an absolute track. Beautiful. Okay, boys, it's time. It's time to rock and roll, and it's time now for limit testing. Now we will test the power of Mordor against the power of these rangers and those archers. The thing is, this Gondor has no leadership. I mean, not even Faramir leadership. But what you need in the situation is you need to have Boromir leadership. Boromir is the only way Gondor can get additional damage leadership. And that's very underrated. And remember, in the patch 2.22, Boromir got a couple, couple of buffs. So he's now cheaper, he's faster, and he also has pillage when he's level 6. And his level 4 leadership, additionally to the 60% increased damage, also grants you now additionally permanent movement speed bonus to nearby infantry units from Gondor. 
Okay, so we are going to war, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to war. During all this time, keep pressuring. Uh, our money is going to look... Oh, oh, is he gonna try... Is he gonna try to fight this? Oh my... Man, that's not a good thing. Oh, look, there's ranges. So they are getting invisible around the trees. That's like a passive thing. Oh, he's peeling. Now we can force a fight. With the Witch King, we can use Screech. Because he has no fear resistant. He has no Faramium and also no Gandalf. So Screech is gonna mess him up. And hopefully it's gonna force him to turn his back and fight us. The second he stops, he will get crushed. He has Farami, but Farami is not level 5 yet. Okay, go Mooma kill, go Mooma kill, go, 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 go. Yes! There we go. <laughs> that is such a satisfying feeling. And guys, now it is darkness time. Okay, so Witch King, please stay with the army. And that's what I was afraid of. You see, he was attacking me. But luckily for us, we always kept some trolls and drummer trolls inside the castle just for the plan B. Hope for the best, but be prepared for the wars. Hey, trolls, don't charge, don't chase. Go back, please. Wait until you, you are needed. And look at this fire operated uh, orc archers on top of the Mumma Kills boys. They are shooting permanently, dealing significant uh, damage every single second. That actually brings up so much additional increased damage. That's crazy. And there is also one beautiful part about this combination. Just in case the Gondor might get to the Eagle Special Summon, our archers on top of the Mumma Kill are going to crush those eagles in a few seconds. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look, this is teaming up, by the way, guys. This is legit teaming up. And you know what we do on this channel against people who are teaming up against us in a free-for-all match. Like, he's actually, instead of going to my base, instead of attacking the other Mordor player, he's trying legit to save this Gondor player. And this is enough to tilt me. And you don't want to tilt me. Because then, I will hit you like a truck, my friend. Okay, so money-wise, it's looking good. And I also definitely want to recruit more, more Nazgûs, just in case the Gondor is camping or the other Mordor has actually some catapults. You don't want to do this, Gandalf. Gandalf, you don't want to do this, my friend. Mifrandia, get out here. There is nothing you can do for this blue Gondor. There is nothing you can do. And Blue Gondor, my friend, you are first, but you are not the last. He's almost fully defeated. That's good. You gotta keep pressuring this Gandalf all the time. You see our Mooma kills with this much leadership, boys? Witch King plus Darkness, they are almost immune. The only way you can deal with that is Fire Arrows. They are extremely vulnerable against Fire, but only against Fire. So <laughs> you need to have Fire if you want to be able to deal with them. And you see this area damage as we are attacking the building. By the way, Swix has been defeated. It was nice to meet you, my friend. And we will now work our way up to the other Gondor player. But during all this time, we can also reclaim the map control and take every single settlement which was normally under the control from the defeated Gondor player. Okay, we have in total four Mooma kills, boys. That's a lot of army, you know. Four Mooma kills, Drummer Troll, Witch King. Eventually, what we, what we should be doing is waiting for the... For the darkness, you know? But first of all, let's capture all these settlements. This, this, you know, this is going to give us the chance and the money to recruit the missing two Nazgûls. Oh, he has even the marketplace, the Grand Harvest. I can see the farms glowing. He has also a lot of money. We have almost 5,000. We are command points capped, so we cannot recruit any more units. But luckily, heroes, they don't cost any command points in Battle for Middle of One. So we can easily recruit the missing two Nazgûs. And the Nazgûs, at this point of the game, they are they cannot be afforded to lose. So just in case, we might need to kill Trebuchet. We might need to kill maybe Archers on top of the wall. It's okay when you sacrifice your Nazgûs. I mean, you don't have to, but it's okay if they can actually have some sort of impact. Because other than, you know, doing that... Uh, at this stage of the game, the Nazgûls can't really do much more, especially in, during a siege battle, in which we're gonna siege now the upcoming uh, Gondor player. So, what else can we do with the Nazgûls, you know? Oh my goodness, this army is also looking dangerous. Oh! Is he gonna die? Is he gonna die? Oh, Faramir is showing his quality! Faramir! Okay, actually, it's also fun to see what, they are, what the others are doing. <laughs> That's why I wanted to always install some of the workers around the map just to see what is going on but these mean people they keep they keep killing my workers all the time and this condor by the way is camping boys this condor is camping 
Look at this. Towers, ranges, inside, statue behind. Uh, holy moly. <laughs> this guy is in camp mode, my friends. He's in the camp mode. But I'm going to go for attack anyway. Again, at the beginning of the video, uh, at the beginning of the game, I actually told you guys I will not recruit any siege weapons in this game. So there are not going to be any catapults or something like that. I mean, dude, sometimes I actually think about adding Grant, you know, to the Mordor faction. From a Siege Forex level 3, you need to invest a lot of money, like 5,000 or something. But then you can actually build one single Grant. And imagine that for a single second, boys. How impactful this would be against camping uh, structures, against camping players. You know, you have Grant, which is extremely tanky, hitting like an absolute track. Let me know what you guys think about Grunt in Battle for Middle of One. Please in the comment section down below, boys. No man can kill me. Because basically Grunt is already in the game. As you are able to build it during the fight in Minas Tirith. Right? The model is already existing. So it's not a hard task to actually add... Oh, hold on a second. My Nazgul, please. It's not a hard task to actually add... Grant to the mortal faction that is done in like few seconds but i don't know about the balance though <laughs> because Grant is so tanky oh the problem is he has rangers and he has a lot of rangers boys i'm gonna commit now just see oh he's very smart dude don't do that to me now we are in actually oh he was beating us so hard okay now we gotta commit 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 go which king go nas goose commit 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 at least we gotta try to get as many power points collected as we can but holy guacamole he is camping so hard my witch king is dancing too and losing the witch king was so bad luckily we can revive them for free but they will need a long time to be back on the menu. And look at this movement kills. The second charge attack has been used. Or they are not in the range to use it. They are so sloppy. Move. Move, please move. Oh, man. Dude, they can't even. They are too thick to pass through the gate. That's what she said, by the way. And they are falling like nothing on the ground. And we couldn't deal any damage. And trust me, guys. We fed this Gondor a lot. And what did I do? I didn't want to demolish the movement kill. What did I do? What did I do? What? I wanted to recruit more. <laughs> what did I just do? Now I lost a level 3 building for no reason. 50% faster build speed and every movement kill coming from the level 3 movement kill pan would be level 2. What did I just do? <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Dude, I'm telling you guys one thing. Those free for all games, they always end up in Fiesta. And for that reason, from now on, we will call free for all as for Fiesta for all, okay? That's the plan. Listen up. We're not stopping here. Oh my goodness. How to handicap yourself? How to defeat yourself? That should be a tutorial video, boys. That should be a tutorial video. Okay, our money is not looking good, but it's it's okay. I mean, uh, we have nothing really to recruit anymore. We have all the Nazguls. They are, you know, either on the field or dead, and they are being revived. Oh, there is a huge fight. I want to see what is happening here. I see Gandalf Faramir. Boromir is also on the field, the captain of Gondor. He's only level 3. He uh, doesn't have leadership unlocked yet. I see a catapult, orc arches. This Mordor is also looking pretty strong to me. I mean, he's going for the traditional build. In which you normally, usually, you want to build up uh, siege works against camping Gondor. But that is against our rules. We said at the beginning, no siege weapons. And we are a man of our word, boys. We are not going to do this. Let's use industry once again. Uh, just, you know, get money, money, money. And we need to recruit. Actually, we are kind of wasting a lot of command points into the Oryx. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. Let's recapture all the settlements outside. This way we can make sure that we have more money and also make sure at the same time that enemy doesn't get that much money. And map control, I know it's being annoying when I see this over and over again, but it's the key to victory, guys. Because imagine if we had no money after losing all these Mumma kills. The, the four Mumma kills we lost were like over 6,000 resources all alone, plus the arches on top of the Mumma kill. So we lost around about 8,000 resources, just like that, you know? 
And also, if you are wondering why I'm not buying a second castle, that's like a golden rule. In free-for-all matches, you are not allowed to buy a second castle. I mean, you could, but that would also be your last game with those guys you play with. You know, they won't play against you or with you anymore because that's like a gentleman's agreement. As this is going to give you a huge advantage and will slow down the game a lot. It's like a golden rule. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to build now a slaughterhouse and send all these orcs inside the slaughterhouse to make some space for the command points. Because we are just wasting too many command points into the orcs. And we are still so far away from the <laughs> from the Balrog Summon too. So that's kind of... The Balrog Summon I believe is going to be almost the only possible way how we can deal with this Gondor. Besides having siege weapons. I mean, if we would be recruiting some siege weapons like 5-6 catapults... It would be over for him. He has nothing to deal with that. But yeah. Let's try to win without this. Look at the minimap, boys. We have almost 100% map control. That's awesome. And Darkness is almost back up. Our Witch King is back on the menu. Our Nazgul is back on the menu. And yeah, we are as strong as we can get. We cannot recruit any more units as we are talking. We are command points kept. We will get command points now as we are selling those Orcs though. We also get some money from it. And now we can recruit more and more. But I want to actually move. The question is, I don't know what he has. I know I fed him a lot. Right? He has, he has eagles. He might even have very soon army after that. Because he keeps also fighting against the other mortal player. Because he's in the middle, he's in a sandwich situation, right? I'm going to give them actually rocks. Let's try a different new strategy. Let's give them all the rocks. And give them the whole ground stance. This way they don't automatically attack. And what we're going to try to do is, as we are not allowed to get catapults, let's throw rocks, shall we? That's, by the way, something I've never done before against Camping Gondor, but I'm sure it's going to work out. And with the new battle stands, we can tell them, hey, you guys don't do anything until we tell you what to do, okay? So, please grab a rock and we are ready to go. We have Darkness, we have Witch King, we have Eye of Sauron, we have Drummer Trolls, we have a huge army worthy of Mordor. And every Mooma kill has also some archers on top of it, which is pretty awesome. So just in case he might summon eagles against us, we have definitely something to deal with that. The only question is, how close is Gondor to his army after that? Because everything that I was just talking about is meaningless if he has access to the Offbreaker army. And then we will lose everything. <laughs> because army after that doesn't care about our leadership bonuses, about our heroes. They don't care. They will run us down in a few seconds. Oh my goodness, boys. Oh my goodness, wish me luck. <laughs> wish me luck, let's go. Look at this. Dude, this is such a cool army, dude. Let, I mean, you gotta, be, you gotta be real with me, guys. You gotta be honest with me. Look at this cool army of Mordor. You know, did you ever see this? Like in a multiplayer game, I mean, three Mooma kills, drummer troll, trolls with frogs. And watch this. I want to I wanna show you guys. Please, we have darkness activated. Can we, can we kind of hide? <laughs> Watch this, please. Watch this. I of Sauron. Pew. Boom. One shotting. Now you go back and we do this over and over again. Okay, that's the plan. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. We need to find now rocks once again and keep throwing that on their face. Okay, that is the plan. Come on. Rock, throw rock. Oh, he's <laughs> he's trying to leave from the wall. <laughs> no, no, no. I actually catch one of them. All right, guys. Now please find more rocks and we can keep doing this over and over again until we break through his ball through his defense and finish off this gondor the camper and we also get you know power points we are not allowed or we shouldn't take a full control I'm, I'm gonna sacrifice one of them just to see if i get the chance to commit but he's doing a good job he's hitting and running hitting and running all the time but he's kiting us so extremely well come on oh oh my my nazgul please don't die please don't die Okay, hey, if your Gandalf doesn't stop there, I will kill him. Oh, he actually damaged us so much, dude. He damaged us so much. Okay, one of the Mooma kills is going to be taken down, but it's okay. If we can trade at this point money for power points, I'm down. The Balrog is going to be the win point. And look at this. Take this on your face. Take this on your face. <laughs> you got to let me know, guys, what do you think about the rock throwing trolls? I think they are busted. 
I think they are very underrated. Dude, I've been playing this game for many, many years, and I've been using them only once or twice against Gandalf. Just to snipe Gandalf when he stands still and using the abilities. But I've never used them for sieging purposes. They are actually quite busted. Oh man, this kiting is actually getting on my nerves, boys. Now the problem is, once the charge attack is on cooldown... Oh, Gandalf, 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 the kids move, you shall not pass. Looks like meets back on the menu, boys. That's the problem, boys. If you cast an ability with Gandalf, or it's like the same situation with the Warm Tongue from Saruman, you cannot move for like two seconds after you do it. And that was his mistake. Now the Mooma kill killed with... Oh my goodness, what is this damage, my man? Did you guys see that? Besides killing the... Oh, but look, look, guys, please. Watch what I'm gonna do to these eagles. Watch what I'm gonna do to these eagles. If you target the Mooma kill and the Fell Beast in the Nazgûs, the Mooma, the archers on top of the Mooma kill are gonna also attack these eagles. Do you see that? They are gone in two seconds. They don't stand a chance. And every troll was also able to survive. Dude, we came here with six power points. We have now 12 power points in the bank. We are only eight power points away from the game winning point, the Balrog, the demon from the ancient world. But he's sniping us. Let's retreat. Unfortunately, we lost every Mooma kill but one. Only one of them is remaining, but we have more in our castle. Bring all this time. Yes, bring all these also these Mooma kills. Give them also banner and fire upgrades. And keep up the pressure all the time. Our Nazgûs were able to survive. In, in an ideal situation, we need to wait um, for Sage. We should be waiting at least for the darkness to be ready to get the maximum benefits of the insane leadership Mordor can get. And hey, this Mordor is actually killing my level 5 movement kill. Why would you kill the hero? He killed Gandalf. He was the only one who was able to deal with Mifrandia. Throw rocks, my friend. Throw rocks. Oh my goodness, let's commit. <laughs> he has no Gandalf. Maybe we can... Oh, never mind. Oh my goodness, what am I doing? <laughs> Dude, this camping situation... What is my is doing? My trolls, they are getting knocked down on the ground too. Attack, attack, attack. My witch king. Oh my goodness, man. Okay, we actually, we throw so hard now. I underestimated the damage. I was actually kind of thinking that when Gandalf is dead, maybe I can make a move because those towers, they have no laser shots. So he didn't build up the stone worker. But foolish I was. Foolish I was, guys. Mistakes are made. Mistakes are made. Okay, so luckily, <laughs> you know, we can revive those Nazgûls. But on the, on the bad side, I think we literally fed him now the AOD special summon. So he has eagles now for a while. I believe he just summoned eagles for the second time already. I'm assuming he has enough power points for the, for the AOD. But we gotta take a risk anyway. So in the, in the worst case scenario, he has to use AOD for defense. That's good for us because it means he cannot use it for offense. So the best usage of AOD is if you can use it to kill enemy units in army, but then you have an army yourself which you can use to push back. You know? And AOD and Baldrock, they have a huge cooldown in this game. So the second he uses that, we have a long cooldown window which we can use to kind of punish him for that, knowing the fact that he has his army of the dead on cooldown. And on a map like this, I gotta be honest, I believe Baldrock is a bit more impactful because Baldrock's uh, DPS against structures is kind of insane. So Balrog, while AOD can kill the full army, Balrog should be able to nearly kill the full castle himself. And if he can't, we kill you know kill the castle from Gondor with Gond uh, with Balrog all alone. We can also support him with the Fell Beast and the Witch King. Okay, we have full command points anyway. I think we can now go for the attack. And you know, just in case he has AOD, I'm okay if he can't kill my army because I can make another army in a few seconds. Our buildings are level 3. The trolls, they will come out on the field in a few seconds. So are the Mumakios. Level 3 buildings actually are very important in Battle for Middle Earth 1. Especially production buildings, but also resource buildings. What if a fight here? Mordor is actually going inside the jeans. Let's see if we can contribute and take down the Gondor first before it's gonna be a 1v1 situation between Mordor against Mordor. Mordor Civil War. So that's the power actually of evil factions. You have seen it was like an equal situation. Hey, Witch King, what are you doing? Witch King from my opponent, what are you doing? That's not a good thing from you, my friend. You will die. I will kill your Witch King. Shoot, shoot. Look at this orc arches, dude. Look at them. They are actually crushing the Witch King. And Witch King has been taken down. That's good for me because I get, I get power points from it. That's awesome. Now we can go inside the jeans. But also Mordor is, I want to actually flank and trample down all these Orc Archer units. That's my plan. That's my plan. He lost another Nazgul. What is happening? The trolls are actually smashing. Gondor is about to lose the game. Now go contribute. Go trample them all. Go kill everything. You, you can even trample 
the trolls with the charge attack, by the way, guys. Watch this. Oh my goodness. No, abort mission. No, no, no. Okay, I mean, it is whatever. You know what I'm saying? It is whatever. Here's also Gandalf back on the menu. Dude, why did I not listen to myself? Why did I not just wait patiently for the Gondor player to use AOD to, teal, to kill the enemy army? And after the AOD is gone, I could just commit and finish off the Gondor. Why did I not listen to my own six cents? Holy moly, mistakes over mistakes over mistakes. Mumbai kills, they cannot disengage. That's not possible. And our full population is almost dropping down to zero. Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. That's not that's not good, boys. I mean, luckily there is no threat. Look at the minimap. We have we have 16,000 plus man. I mean, we are we are rich, right? We can do whatever we want. At this point, we can make an army. Lose the army, make another army, lose the army, make another army. That's how rich we are. And I only lost the Witch King one time. But normally, you know, again, that's not how you normally play this matchup. When you play a free for all match on this map, you normally build the Siege Warwicks and get some catapults on the field. But I want to actually have some more fun with the Muma kills, you know? And I think Muma kills are actually a great opportunity because they are kind of requiring a lot of focus from your opening player. He has to watch out every single step he takes because one mistake will make him to a sandwich of the Mumma kills. No so like three, four Mumma kills and then we are going. You know, his AOD is on cooldown. It's a huge cooldown for us and we need to be fast before he has AOD backup. And that's a mistake of medium players. You know, they actually kind of wait. When you know your opponent has the access to the ultimate special summon, then you want to fight him. Because feeding them is meaningless. You already fed him. You know, we already fed him at this point. He has already everything unlocked. So feeding now is whatever. You know what I'm saying? He can't get much stronger than he already is in the PowerPoints department. But we can. But we have access to the mightiest creature of Middle-earth in BFME 1. And that is, of course... Balrog. Okay, so we are only four power points away from this point. Only four power points away from this point. And then we are ready to go, guys. Look at this. Four Muma kills. Trolls, drummer trolls. Let's go. Our fell beasts are back. Our Witch King is back on the menu. Darkness is almost back up. Now is the time to shine. Now is the time to finish off this Gondor once and for all. And I believe during the fight against Gondor, we also will be able to get power points unlocked to get the Balrog special summon, which we might not even need to use against Gondor himself. Then we can use Balrog to kill the Mordor army and finish him off right after. That's gonna be like a win-win situation for us. Look at this Mumma killer. <laughs> okay, dude, we actually used pretty much this one pathway at the bottom side in the past 30 minutes. That's unbelievable. Let's go, boys. Let's go inside the jeans. So, all ground stands on these Nazguls. This way, they won't make any shine against themselves. There is a, a Gandalf. We can actually try to kill him or force him to use heal. Three Nazguls or two Nazguls and Witch King are actually dealing great amount of damage to the heroes too. Watch this. Boom, boom, boom. And he's losing like almost half of his HP, you know. Basically, what we are attacking him with is 18,000 resources. So, it's... Oh, he actually catch my one of my Nazguls. He has to use heal. That's good. Now we know the heal is on cooldown. I am what it's whatever, you know, losing the Nazgul is okay. Because we have already another Nazgul and also Witch King. Now we should be waiting here until the Eagles are gone. So he was actually fully committing. He was summoning the Eagles and also the Rangers. That actually gives us a lot of time to just wait here until they disappear. So there is no need to fight. Because if we fight, uh, this Rangers are gonna take care of us. You know, it's gonna be a nightmare situation. And we don't want it. We want we don't want this to happen. Okay, so just be patient, you know, wait slowly and be smart about the choices we make. And the second we see eagles are gone, we can rotate and go ham. This is the man of the east, boys. If darkness, which king don't die, which king please. We can use Screech here to mess him up a little bit. Gandalf is not nearby. This army is looking dangerous though. He has, you know, level 6 archer, he has Faramir, Boromir. But we shall see. We are only four power points away, so even if we lose this fight, which I hope is not going to happen, hopefully we will at least get the power points we, we need to summon the demon of the ancient world. 
So, which king is the MVP? He has to stay alive. I don't care about the Nazgul. Ooh, nice. Okay, I'm coming for you. Gandalf is also there. Boromir and Faramir. Go, 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 go. Faramir is no more. But Boromir is no more. <laughs> Gandalf, you don't want to do this, my friend. Gandalf, you don't want to do this. Look, they are dancing around coming inside the jeans. Okay, Gandalf can't play the game. So, because I'm always kind of threatening him with my movement kill. If he is... Oh, you want to easter at my witch king? Are you sure about that? I don't think you are. Hey, movement kill, it's time to work. Come on, bring your butt to this situation. You can build towers all you want, brother. It's not going to change too much for you. Trust me, that one. And... The city is going down. Mumma kills, they are quite tanky. We lost only one of them during all this situation. And I don't think he has enough army and the strength. Oh! Oh, that was really cool. Oh, oh! You wanna do this? Yeah, I mean, he can't do much. He just used his spells. You know, I think he has Easter Light. He wants to eventually... Oh, you want to snipe my Witch King? Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? <laughs> Gandalf, rest in peace, my friend here. That's the second time you are being food of my Mumu kill. And that's how threatening Mumu kills can be against heroes, guys. If you struggle against heroes, hey, Mumu kills are your special weapon. It's this Condor, the Red Condor. He was playing really good. He was annoying. I played really bad, but he has been defeated. That's the power of Mordor. Now, the question is, who is the stronger Mordor? Because two of the Gondors, we defeated them. Now, the last player is remaining. And I'm telling you guys, every time I'm playing Fury for All, I have to legit defeat everybody. There is nobody else defeating each other. What are they doing? Okay. Look, the Mooma kills, dude. Hey, I'm gonna summon Balrog on top of your face, son. Oh, there it comes. The demon. Boom, son. There we go. This is such a cool animation, even though this game is from 2004, it's awesome. We keep even killed the Nazgul while we are flying. Okay, fly one more. Recruit, revive. Oh, he's gonna call it. Alright guys, GG well played, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. Keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out.